The 2001 great French movie Amélie is a fantastic story about life and joy. You probably saw it at least once, maybe several times if you studied it at school or with the Alliance Française, it is very, very famous abroad. But even with subtitles, it is very difficult to understand all the details of the conversation and you probably missed quite a lot of subtlety. So today, let's practice your oral comprehension together using examples from Amélie. Bonjour, I'm Géraldine, your French teacher. Welcome to Comme une Française. Today, like every Tuesday, I'm here to help you get better at speaking and understanding everyday spoken French. Amélie, or in its French title, Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain. Le Fabuleux Destin d'Amélie Poulain takes place in Paris in 1997. Or at least a much cleaner, much more magical version of Paris than in reality. Yes, just like you probably saw in Emily in Paris. But good for you, this movie is not built on old cliches and boring writing. Instead, it seeks to spread joy in the little things of life. I am not going to explain all the popular culture references that are in Emily or all the French culture that is in there. Today, let's concentrate on understanding spoken French behind the subtitles, because characters can show their own personalities or their background with even just a few lines or even one word. And you might miss it if you only read the subtitles. For instance, the waitress Georgette speaks with her own accent. Ah, mon Dieu, je sais pas comment sera le nouveau, mais en tout cas, ce sera jamais aussi pire que l'autre timbré, là, avec son magnétophone. Here, if you listen very closely, you can hear that she's eating some vowels. She doesn't say je sais pas, she says je sais pas. She also doesn't say sera, she says sera. And at last, que l'autre timbré becomes Claude Timbré. So she really cuts some vowels. And these spoken French shortcuts also hide a more subtle thing is that Georgette actually speaks with a slight accent of rural eastern France. The nasals are a bit more nasal than they could be with me, for example, and the A ah sounds more like an O. Oh. You can hear it very well in the way that she accentuates l'eau timbré là. She says l'eau timbré là. Ah mon dieu, je sais pas comment sera le nouveau, mais en tout cas, ce sera jamais aussi pire que l'eau timbré là, avec son magnétophone. It is really subtle, but, and it is close to the more well-known accent of Northern France that you might have heard in other movies as well. It is associated in media with more down-to-earth characters and less sophisticated people than these snobby Parisians. Then another character speaks with a Southern accent. Monsieur, tu la connais. Depuis quand? Depuis toujours. Dans tes rêves. This talking picture is a dream of Nino, the character that you can see in bed. But it has its own personality because Nino has a very wide imagination. The southern accent is more associated with a warm and outgoing personality. Did you catch the accent? Here he doesn't say, tu la connais, which would be more Parisian with this E. Eh. He says, tu la connais instead. And he's subtly pronouncing the N in nasal vowels and the final silent A. Uh. For example, he doesn't say dans tes rêves, as I would say. He says dans tes rêves. Dans tes rêves. Monsieur, tu la connais. Depuis quand? Depuis toujours. Dans tes rêves. And of course, the way that people speak can reveal things about themselves, even with one single word. Justement, elle y pense. Elle est en train de réfléchir à un stratagème. Did you catch that? Un stratagème, un stratagème is a ploy. Un stratagème. It is a very complicated word. And in spoken French, we would tend to use a shorter word. For example, we would use a synonym as un plan, for example, or un moyen. Un plan is a plan and un moyen is a way or a mean. This is much simpler. 
But here, Amélie uses the word stratagem. It is a sign. It shows that she spends a lot of time thinking about those plans and those ploys instead of actually tackling her own problems. And that is her character flow. The movie talks more about her problem, especially in that scene. But you can already tell a lot even from just one word, if you have the spoken French context about it. Generally, you can also practice listening to basic everyday French conversation in this movie. Bonjour, monsieur. Euh, je vous appelle pour vous signaler qu'un de vos appareils est en panne. Euh, ben, non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a un truc qui est coincé. Here, Amélie starts with a very polite, thought-out sentence. She says, Bonjour, monsieur, je vous appelle pour vous signaler qu'un de vos appareils est en panne. It means, Hi, I am calling to tell you that one of your booths is out of order. And by the way, you can use the same structure of je vous appelle pour if you need to make a polite phone call. Can you repeat it? Repeat after me. Bonjour, monsieur, je vous appelle pour... Vous signalez qu'un de vos appareils est en panne. Here, in terms of vocabulary, you can also notice that en panne could be replaced by hors service. Hors service, instead of en panne, it works very well. Then the person on the phone asks a question that you can't hear and she answers in incorrect, informal, everyday spoken French. She says, euh, ben non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a un truc qui est coincé. Euh, ben non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a un truc qui est coincé. Mm, no, but I think there is something that is stuck. This is very important because here you can see much better the signs of spoken French because it's much more spontaneous. She says ben, she says un truc for a thing, she says ya instead of il y a, and at last she doesn't say qui est, she says qui est. This is very, very spoken French. In written French, we would say differently. We would say, all right, obviously, non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a quelque chose qui est coincé. Non, mais j'ai l'impression qu'il y a quelque chose qui est coincé. In that phone call, she sounds as if she had rehearsed the first sentence, but she was surprised by the question and she had to improvise her answer in informal everyday French. There are tons of other great French conversations in this movie because it is so well written. But you can also use other resources if you want to practice your listening comprehension. I prepared a playlist for you where I show you some embarrassing mistakes in the Netflix show Emily in Paris and how you can do better than her. Then I will tell you about a very famous and very popular new French TV show called Au Service de la France or A Very Secret Service in English. And I will show you how you can enjoy reading French with my favorite newspaper. So check this playlist right here. Click on the screen to access these three lessons. And I will see you in the next video. It's right here. Allez, à tout de suite.